I'm a man. I don't know what I'm doing. It's not true, though. Not at all. Right. Hello. Hello, and welcome to, uh, what have we called it? Parental Mentals. I'm Marcus J. Richardson. I think it's the other way around, isn't it? Mental Parentals. No, it's Parental oh, no, Mentals, because no. the other one had gone. Yeah, that's Parental Mentals. I'm Claire Tilliard. She is. And uh, we are here with our second instalment of our podcast. And a screamy baby. Not sure that's one of those screams that's going to go away. That's going to need a joggle. Yeah, we'll give it the pat. A two-handed joggle. It, it, normally, it normally has the bum pat with the other hand, but I haven't got that option at the moment. Anyway, we digress with the baby. This week, obviously, Again. we're, yeah. we're going to talk about the coronavirus. I don't want to talk about it as a wider subject, but we're going to talk about how it has affected us and what's been going on the last week. Because last time we filmed... None of that had happened in terms of no one had been isolated and yeah, we were all kind of just running free, weren't we? Well, when we released it, it all happened. But when we recorded the first one, we didn't really realise lockdown was that Well, it hadn't, been a f- it hadn't been official lockdown. No, it certainly hadn't. No, because when we recorded it, the schools no. hadn't even shut. So, uh, that, no. that all so we've quickly. had our first week <laughs> of complete lockdown. Yeah, and the one the big thing to come out of it... School closings. Yeah, the one big... Th- oh, baby, she's not happy. The one big thing to come out of it, I think we've realised... Is that you can't? Why I'm drinking wine. Yeah, you can't judge your relationship based on the time uh, of the coronavirus. But no, we will go into more detail maybe in other episodes Make about that. no judgments whatsoever about your relationship whilst lockdown is in play. Yeah, don't take the mick with it. Obviously, don't be going like, oh, well, I can do what I want because of the coronavirus and that. It's not like that. But equally, you're going to come under a lot of strain and pressure. I think everybody's going to be coming under a lot of strain and pressure and isolation and boredom and so on and so forth. But I think for us, you know, the cabin fever is real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the pressure was already on. As we explained last time, we've had a lot going on, haven't we? Yeah. We've got quite a complicated setup, as it were. Yeah. For those who have just joined us, basically, yeah. Claire and I, if this is your first episode, Claire and I are couple engaged fiance i don't know sorry what are we we're 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 engaged we've got a baby together which is arty who she's here nine weeks claire has two others fleur and william who are currently in bed so we have the three children the two bedroom house the puppy like last time we have a lot going on and then you throw lockdown into the mix yeah and homeschooling and everybody being in the house all of the time. If you did see last time, you'll know that William, uh, Claire's son, has ASD and Fleur requires meds uh, because of uh, an adrenal insufficiency. Yes. Yes. Well get done. In there. I want to high five you. I've got no hands in the face. In the face. In the face. Oh, okay. you were a lot more gentle than you could have been then. You could have been <laughs> horrible with that. You could have smashed me in the chops. I could have taken the opportunity. Anyway, quickly today, what we're going to be really going over, we're going to be talking about when is it wine o'clock? I feel all the time yeah. at the moment. What do we take for granted? Silence. If you've got a baby. Our own headspace. Sleep. Me time. Yeah. Um, sleep. Few tips from us. Coffee, coffee, oh. We're not not doing it right now. We're going to do that later. Oh. But we're also going to give you a few tips about how to get through the coronavirus. Not that we're necessarily getting through it, but, you know, a few tips to just help you along the way. And also a big one, I think this is what we'll start with, um, because we have just mentioned about, I don't even think we need to go into too much detail about the judgment of a relationship. Just take that as a note, like, just don't judge each other. It's going to get tense. It's going to get tetchy. You're going to snap at each other more than usual. And, you know, a few tips we're going to talk about later on will be about that and how to not necessarily judge each other so much but I think what we should start with especially if you've got kids is more about the pressure of homeschooling yes I really want to talk about this because I was yeah I'm gonna say cocky because I called you cocky didn't she I did. last time mm-hmm. I was cocky about homeschooling because I was really excited about it in a way and I thought I can do this no problem because I was excited so I thought this will be fine I've got this I've got an art degree, we can just do art most of the time and we'll throw in the odd thing that they don't even realise is happening. We'll kind of homeschool by doing the things that we normally do, but adding in a bit of education. And actually, we did do that the first week. We smashed it. I felt like we smashed it the first three or four days. We did, we did, but I don't think we had much left in the tank by the time they'd gone to bed. I think we That's exactly what happened. Almost by day three and four, we were just like, we'd spent all of our energy 
we'd use all of our ideas and then yeah i mean we were getting out going for walks and we'll show a couple of little videos here now just to break up the imagery on screen uh, of what we were doing we're taking the dog out you know playing football with the kids but there's only so many routes you can take we're very lucky that around us there are a lot of fields and places to go which means you can socially distance and still get a lot of time out and about and i do yeah. think that was we're very blessed with that but actually doing that every day, taking the dog out, you know, you get into a routine, it's good, but it's tiring. And then you come back and you do start doing work and start doing more stuff. And then the we kids were swapping the baby over. And then we've got kind of a nearly nine year old, nearly six year old. Obviously, they're in very different stages of education. So it's factoring that into the mix. And then by day three or four, I was just, I actually, had, I was done with it. I was fed up. I didn't want to do it anymore. So actually, I just thought, I'm not going to do it. And I, I've been reading all these kind of memes and things online and everybody kind of saying that we haven't been asked to homeschool and we haven't. And that's really, really key to remember that we're not being asked to homeschool. We're not being asked to turn into teachers because a lot of us haven't chosen to be teachers for a reason. And I've found it really hard this week, really, really hard. So I've just almost sacked it off. We've done, we've written a little bit of a schedule. We've it got is the, Tuesday kind today, of, right? It's only Tuesday. Yeah, no, but yesterday I thought it was Friday and it was Monday. So yeah, I thought no, we'd done two weeks. It's only it was... Tuesday. I'm done. I'm yeah. done. And I'm okay with that. But you just, you, sorry, I think you were about to say that before I rudely cut you off because I was worried about what day we were on. You'd seen the schedule you put together today. Yeah, so we put a really loose schedule together. Six or seven rows, lunch and dinner are also in there and bedtime. And just put rough subjects in and just thought, right, well, I'll think of what we're going to do for that subject that day, even that morning. But, but it's just, very loose. I'm just I mean, keep like, it really loose and yeah, not worry about I, I just mean, don't want to worry about it. If they say to me, I had an, a morning when I tried to do numeracy that was monday there was probably 10 meltdowns five each and i just thought i'm not doing this anymore it isn't worth it i'm forcing them to do it which means they're not taking the information in they're both really highly stressed in a time that's stressful you know me and you are stressed just with everything that you hear on the news and all the information that we're gathering from the outside world is really stressful and none of us need that so actually just i think almost be led by your children in that they'll they'll tell you when they when it's all too much there's that thing called child-led parenting isn't there but i think maybe it's that more like a child-led education we do have to give them some foundations and basis to 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 work from but i think yeah you're right, which you know, we are i think we can we, we we almost can abandon phonics and numeracy and all that bollocks because the I really think, structured stuff yeah i think for us you know like we were learning about we saw a bird out that we'd never seen before and we managed to see what colors it was and then we searched that that bird and the colors and we managed to find it, it was a lapwing i've never heard of it i'm a bit of a twitcher for those that don't know means you're just like watching birds you know? <laughs> otherwise it sounds a bit weird. yeah so i'm a bit of a twitcher uh, <laughs> um, but basically yeah it means we like birds and uh, Fleur and i spent ages researching this bird and we found it, and it was a lap wing and it was like really exciting and you know and that that in itself is science you know we started looking at the camera and using slow-mo and me editing and that's technology you know so you're just being creative you think of that as learning but no, it, is. it is yeah. it really is and, you know you might be a carpenter or something like get the kid in the in the garage with you doing a bit of woodwork you know yeah. if you're a whatever your profession is if you're a, if you're a nurse you know i don't know maybe you can start teaching about medical things but while talking about the nurses you know power to the nhs right now uh obviously they are keeping us going claire's mom was a nurse wasn't she yeah and my sister's a radiographer so oh, yeah, i we we really understand what they're going through at the moment and actually it's really hard for them so yeah i mean this is the other thing we've got it easy in in so many ways that we have it easy yeah, i'm not having to leave, i'm on maternity leave at the moment and i feel so incredibly lucky that that's coincided with this because my bestest friend in the world is having to fit almost full-time hours because luckily my company lets her work from home so she can still be paid but she's having to have absolutely no childcare and work full-time and her husband's working full-time so they're just kind of swapping the children over and they're starting to work at six in the morning I just Imagine, we are yeah. so lucky not having to do that well I mean I'm still trying to do a bit of work here and there but you've even got the <laughs> You've even got the situation. Who's editing this, by the way? 
<laughs> like your mum and my dad, you know, your mum is all on her own. I mean, at least your mum gets a little bit of contact. My dad, obviously, he's really struggling. For those who don't know, my dad had a stroke, well, two years, almost two years ago now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, July it was, Christ, so 18 months. He, yeah, but his communication skills aren't that good, really. He can't speak too well anymore. You know, he's not well at the moment. He's really not well, and that's it. He's just, he's in quarantine now for, for the foreseeable. He's um, not able to even sort of get the bus to... Well, no, to do he's his not shopping allowed out. And that and on Monday, he's not allowed out. So he's no. got warden care and stuff. And basically, they drop in some stuff for him, leave things on his doorstep. So we are, we're moaning about how hard it is. But again, I think anyone who's watching this who is like, oh, I've got this hard, I've got my family, it could be worse. You yeah, could be we don't want to insult own. the people who are suffering with real issues issues and yeah. i know and and again we haven't been poorly there is people that have been really poorly like yeah. my sister's fam. my sister works for the nhs and she's also then had all of the family in turn have symptoms and and be really really poorly to the point where she was really worried and we've been lucky and none of us have had that so we're all healthy as i mean i can't believe how healthy we all are i, know, I mean it's it's, weird. We're, we're just powering through but again we're, we're, we're not meeting bit up with people we're keeping with the social distancing and so on and so forth we but. are completely isolating ourselves but it's but, easy to do that in a in a village you know we're in the middle yeah. of nowhere so even our walks we don't see anybody really no but just talking about the, so, uh, the difficulties of uh homeschooling like you know you listen to us and we're like oh we're doing this subject and that subject and wanky 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 like and we that know might be for schedule. 30 minutes yeah, out of the like, entire day the lessons we're are, just yeah, doing it the lessons can be 20 minutes long 10 yeah. minutes long five minutes long we're taking it as a win if yeah. they learn one thing like you taught them a the new word yeah discombobulate oh we'll get to that in a second actually <laughs> but like for geography for instance the way i made geography interesting i was teaching them continents and then it was just like name your favorite footballer and we'll work out what country they're from and then where is that country continent wise and it was you know it got the, the kids know that Salah's from Egypt now and Egypt's in Africa and so on and so forth but Claire was telling him I, saying I, I tried to teach him one word a day and it uh, ended on day one but and I need to start doing that again but I took them discombobulate and then two days later on the chase uh, I need I wonder if I can find these videos uh, buzzing at home school right now this guy what does discombobulate mean Confused. right we learned that the other day question on the chase to discombobulate is to do what Dissect, eat, or confuse. He got it right. The chaser didn't. <laughs> He's eight. He's eight. <laughs> so to say we're a little bit proud is good. How happy are you that with Ian? Good happy. happy indeed. <laughs> Good happy. That is literally. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy about that. Homeschool in the astronomicals. Oh, it I mean... was just the best thing wasn't it to yeah watch. it was great he's doing this full-on excitement tick which is as a mum of a child with autism is, there isn't anything more pleasurable to watch yeah he's just we just love seeing him do that exactly because it's and, such a and win that, that when is he's happy and excited that is literacy but you just teach him one word like you don't need to worry about necessarily getting him to write all of this sort of stuff like just a little bit of english language give him a word they you know flannel teach your kids what flannel means it's a great word we haven't done flannel yet but again we're we're kind of explaining this from our point of view but there might there, there are children my hilariously beautiful niece for example who is just she's learned her school schedule she's in middle school and she just she's doing her school schedule and for for northern to, for, to northerners, the for northerners middle school is like year five to year eight and weird. it's just that's the best thing ever and that's brilliant and that yeah. that works for her so again be yeah, almost child led, child -led. you yeah. know they'll tell you when it, things are stressing them out but for her it would stress her out not to do that yeah so my sister's just like go do it and the thing is it's almost if you're like oh my, your kid doesn't want to do school work but you feel pressure to do something just don't tell them they're doing don't, any school work don't feel pressured either but yeah but just don't that's but, the main thing yeah but if you if but if you're like yeah well that's true don't put that pressure on yourself but if you are like no i must do something i must must do something what can i do then you just got to be creative with it you know like when you're watching tv you know maybe just stick a documentary on that's a bit more relevant so if you can hear the dog snoring in the background he's going wild down there but it's um, or baking if you go with what you're good at as well because yeah, nine we out of ten of my lessons one. are art lessons because that's my passion and what mm. i'm good at whereas if you're good at baking you know that'd be an amazing thing to teach them yeah like you said 
like carpentry or whatever your trade is. But also getting, if you, I mean, again, not everybody's got one, but if you've got a garden, get in the garden, dig it up, have a look, you know, just look at soil. Like there's mad stuff in soil. Like I've got an allotment, which to be honest, I don't even know if you're allowed to use. I've seen some people post on Instagram. I did there, Google that, it because you said you were going to the allotment the other day and I was like, I'm not sure you're allowed. So I Googled it and you are allowed. You are allowed you, to go to the allotment. It can count as your exercise. Right. Well, because you are there. social distancing, you know, you're very unlikely to be near another person. But you're probably going to be near old people. But anyway, yeah. No, so but I, you could keep well away from them. Yeah. And it's a don't go to the allotment shop. Right. And you can't take your kids, I guess, then. And don't take your children. Right. Okay. So. Um, but you could go on your own, which yeah. mentally would be great. I mean, yeah. I'm jealous already. That's, well, you could go. You could just go. Like, you do anything at my allotment. <laughs> you hate my allotment. Like, no, I don't hate it. I, I mean, it's brilliant. It's just not my bag. No, it's not your bag or your, it's not your anything. Like, anyway. No, I, d- I mean, I try to be vaguely interested in it. Well, this is it. And I like when you bring carrots home. Yeah, I, I, f- I, I dug up the beetroots and left them last time because my shed had been dismantled. The wind, the, the well, storm. Well, so you had der- beetroots and you didn't bring them home? Well, no, because my sto- the storm had battered me and, and actually at that point you won't be my friend anyway. Well, let's crack on anyway. I okay, think there's no right or the wrong. Subject. There's no there's no right or wrong. No, and just honestly remove the pressure. We don't have to be teachers. No. Just have fun with your children. And, and, and that's th- imagine, what I've learned. Imagine what you would have been like if you were a kid and you all of a sudden got an extra 12 weeks off school. Like this is going to be an, am- an amazing set of memories when they get older that you'll be able to look back on and be like, remember when you had 74 weeks off school? Wasn't that fun? For and your you? parents went insane. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's the other thing we'll touch on again. We'll go back to like your parents are going to go insane. Us, we're going to go insane. And you are going to take it out on each other and it is going to be tense and you know maybe that we'll get to this some... is probably the nicest conversation we've had yeah with each other well let's get week. to some tips then let's go to some tips now because i think <laughs> this is the point like at the best of time you're not very good at taking say me time. Mean, here's, here's some tips to how to help each other before you get onto like the kids and the family and everything else like how to help each other because you need to start with each other if you aren't looking after yourself you can't be the best parent like if you're not the best claire and i'm not the best marcus then you can't be the best mom and dad yeah and we spoke about my inability to take help last time so today win yeah, you're going to carry You on. said, I'll take the children out on a walk. I did. And I was like, we, well, we probably had a five minute conversation about it mm. where I was just like, no, no, I'll come. It's fine. I do not want to go on a walk today. 15 just, times she I said just, she didn't want to go on the walk. I didn't and want I'm to like, do it's right it. Down. I just was, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it anymore. We've done it. 20 days in a row yeah. the same walk and I, went, I hate football I don't want to play football and that's all they want to do and I can't do it for one more day and that was just how I felt today I love football so I'm all right with that so, so I, you were just like I'm fine I'll take them out and I was like oh now I'll come and I probably we probably had that back and forth mm. 20 times before yeah. I said oh do you mind okay all right then yeah and we went out for an hour and a half. We had a great time. And look, let's be honest. Football, the reason Claire doesn't like football isn't just because of the game. It's more because of what it does to the kids sometimes. One of the things that William struggles with is competition and not winning. And Yeah, you relate to this if you have a child. If anyone is watching with a child with ASD, they don't, they don't deal with losing very well. No. So when you have a game... That involves and the horrible win. He's a horrible winner as well. Like he gets <laughs> right up in your grill when he wins as well. So he's a bad loser and a bad winner. But, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. I mean, games in general, just we don't go there really. Uh, no. I mean, we football. we avoid them at all costs. But oh, I love football so much. Well, this is it. And you weren't there today. Normally, we don't set up a goal. It's just passing and just kicking it about, getting the dog chasing. Anything it involves no competition. Like we. We made a little video for Fleur teaching people how to do... Top hat. Top hat. I'll, I'll quickly show you that video. Actually, no, I'll put a link to it up there. There's a link to it up there. You can go and watch Fleur's little top hat video. But yeah, we, we, we play football. We can have a knockabout. But today I set up a goal. I put two goal posts out or two jumpers. Jumpers brave, for goal posts. Brave, man. Yeah. I didn't pre-warn William. I wasn't like, oh, if you do this, we won't be able to do this. I was just like, let's just see how it goes. And we got, and literally, we were around the corner from the house. So we didn't walk very far. And we just played football for an hour hour and a half just passing shooting passing shooting passing shooting passing shooting the entire time everything went so well everything was always was like oh my god this is this is great and then we got right to the end and i was like right okay we're gonna go over now he's like no no i don't want to go i was like right five more shots fleur went in there and he missed them all we'd got so close 
And then he just basically had a bit of a struggle, which I would normally try and talk him through. And Claire has taught me this. And I think this doesn't just apply to kids with ASD. This applies to all kids. Less is more when you're explaining things. Just say nothing. And I was like, no worries, mate. Let's go home now. And we left him sort of 10 yards behind, just chuntering away. Might have even had a little swear to himself, but he was far enough away for me to not yeah, hear like it. That guy. Yeah, we didn't yeah, hear it. Pick your battles. And then he was getting closer and closer. And then this is the beast. This is the key that we keep forgetting about. And I remember today, distraction. So he was in the middle of meltdown. And then he'd been talking about something he wants to get for his birthday, which is to do with Fortnite. And I just brought that up. And that was it. Off he went. He's like, yeah, well, actually, I'd really like this skin. It's called Midas. I don't know. If you play Fortnite, you'll know. And that was it. It was just like sorted, got home. Everything was sort of fine until he asked if he could play FIFA just before tea. But that's another story for another day yeah i think we should do actually an entire episode on being a asd parent yeah we've digressed tips so we haven't actually given any tips no well we did about giving each other me time me time yeah we half went on to it really 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 important you took that me time today and how did that make you feel really good how did that make you feel really good I did feel refreshed. So taking your me time makes you feel refreshed and then I could deal with the subsequent meltdown. Well, this is it. I mean, I go and have a little cigarette in the car. That's my me time. The way I described it to Claire earlier is you just put the plug in and you just recharge and you just get to have a bit of perspective on what's just happened in the house. And then quite often, 99% of the time, my um, visits to the car are followed by me coming in going, sorry, (laughs) that's that's a... So uh, for the previous meltdown, yeah, from over me just doing something at some point. But perspective is important, and without me time, I think you, we, we're losing perspective. You know, we we're going to come on to yes. things we've taken to gra- for yes. granted. Perspective in terms of what are the things that we've lost now being in isolation. I get so much perspective, mainly on my relationship from my best friend, and I've not seen her. And I mean, you, I can. You, fight, you skipped I sh- from the tips to what we take from granted. Now we'll come back yeah. to the tips. Then okay, we'll come back to the tips. This so, not, I want to talk about this now. So you take granted your friend. Yeah, I just. That's this is my, just a love in for Becca. This, it this, is, this. is a love in for Becca. Oh. So I miss her so much, but. In terms of my relationship, she gives me so much perspective and that is something that we lose. Yeah, Becca t- is- Becca is my saviour normally, actually. The amount of times I come back and like she's been with Becca and she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, babe. I'd not thought about it this way. And I'm like, oh my I God, mean, Becca is I don't think I'd ace. go quite as far as apologising. No, you don't necessarily go back as far as apologising, but you do apologise metaphorically. I gain perspective to say that mm, I could have dealt with that slightly differently. You think? Maybe I reacted a, a little bit overzealous. Extreme. Extreme <laughs> switching the rolled reversal at this time. No, that is a very so, good yeah. point, actually. I not thought about Nobody's that. Nobody's guessing that at the moment, are they? No. Apart from, well, I could FaceTime her. I will FaceTime her. Yeah, but that's actually something... I don't something... think that that's the same. We're going back to the tips. That's the thing. Like, you've been sending each other funny videos and things like that. I, I think... started that today. No, but I think that's an important thing to do, like, with your mates and your group chats. You know, me and my friends are meeting up on a thing called House Party tomorrow, which I need to download, which is basically, I think, just like a multi-split screen yeah. chat thing, which I think you, you did on WhatsApp, didn't you, the other day? You can do it on WhatsApp also. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think this is something. I think some people have been downloading Zoom and stuff like that. Yeah. So other things are available. Uh, I think it's important you do still meet up and talk with your friends digitally. And, I mean, imagine what would have happened 40 years, 30 years ago, even 20 years ago when these facilities weren't available. That is a question you're not interested in answering. Great, let's move on then. So other things we take for granted. Nip into the shop is a big one for me. Um, Oh, I really wanted a star bar today. You did want a star bar today. And then we had the conversation as to whether that would count as essential shopping and it doesn't. So we can't have a star bar. No. And you didn't get them in the shopping? No, because I'll go to Aldi and Lidl and they don't they don't actually No, you went to Morrison's. And Morrison's briefly, do a star bar. Briefly, and there was loads but, of people in there. We've got a star bar each for us for every day. Do you know what? I, which is what we're used to. We have wanted, a star bar almost every day. You wanted moment. me to buy 14 star bars. Yeah. Because are you trying to tell me that we don't go to the co-op that's down the road for a star bar every day because we do we do it's not you always have, a star bar you have <laughs> is, and you have a what's it called kind of orange sun pellegrino yeah <laughs> is that what you're can. gonna say yeah most days all right then trev 
So I need to buy a six pack of San Pellegrino and 14 no, I star don't bars. No, I don't care about that, the drink. Anyway. I just care about the gr- star bar that I'm yeah. not having. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But the other thing, uh, obviously family, we've mentioned family. Personal space we've spoken about in terms of tips to get me time, but that's a, the, the point but that it personal is, space is yeah. the same thing. It's actually... Yeah. When because you go, you're going to annoy each other a lot. But when you go and see your friends, you you, you know, you're using, you're utilizing your time and your free time and your personal space to share it with people you want to. Whereas in quarantine, you ain't got no choice you're yeah, sharing that do personal you not want to share your personal space with me but, but generally when I choose to yeah <laughs> like I much prefer to choose to spend my personal space with you do you know what I mean <laughs> so rude. share my personal space with you you're so rude like now I'm sharing my personal space with you I know but you should want to all the time oh I do I mean I don't want to share exactly. with you exactly <laughs> that's what I mean there was a secret NT on the end of that dune Anyway, so uh, exercise is another big one. You don't really do that, but um, I miss football oh, I, no, massively. I, I don't really do it. Uh, not playing football for me has been a massive problem, and I'm having to do like press ups now. I mean, I did, I did three sets of twenty yesterday. Uh, and I I've could... been doing squats. So when we do our family walk, we stop at a specific place, don't we, to have a little. That's the only squatting she's been doing. I'll rest time. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I did my 60 press ups yesterday and could, I've could done I, could a lot I, of I squats. I, I've got a punchline to those 60s <laughs> things. I, I, basically, I couldn't brush my teeth. Thanks, forget it. Oh, crikey. Never get my joke out. It's not even a joke. It's not even well, funny you now. You brush your teeth, why? Because the press ups. Oh. I felt better this morning, but anyway. Right, well, that's it. That's all. The th- oh, no. Well, the other thing people take for granted actually is their house. We've already talked about We've done the how opposite annoyed of that. we are. Were the we. Then again, though, Basically, everything annoys you in isolation, doesn't it? I you thought you meant me and Jack. I thought you were just going to stop at everything annoys you. The children, the dog. Yeah. Everything. The weather. It's when just it... too much. You need you need space. You need a little bit of... Well, we got lucky with the weather last week. But this week, it's not been so nice. Yesterday was so... Day before was so windy. Was it Sunday? The wind was horrible and all... all Actually... Oh really freaked myself out by taking the baby into an open field where she, she kind of went purple in the wind and I was like oh my god what have we done and I hightailed it home mm. so it was horrible uh, one of the highlights of this week was yesterday there wasn't it when I was getting my back humped by the dog <laughs> speaking of the dog we can probably show that video now as well it Just wasn't have a quick look a at highlight that. <laughs> is this my life now is this is this what my life's become lockdown UK sweet <laughs> Still going. <laughs> oh, my hair's caught in his collar. Ah. <laughs> So there you go. They see me get dragged off the poof with my by my hair. <laughs> poof. What do you call it? Puff. The poof. Puff sounds a bit homophobic, do you not? <laughs> no. Poof. It's a poof. No. Puffy. Hey, puffy. We uh, we used to call it a puffy. I think that's a smaller version. Hands on a postcard. Is a puff and a poof and a puffy any different? No. I don't think anyone cares. Oh, well, I care. Anyway, so what we go back to the tips. So space, taking, what do we take? That's not a tip. I don't know. I mean, we do tend to have meals together anyway as a family. But I'd like to think across the country, there's lots of families having meals together for consistently for the first time in a long time. Because a lot of people work late and so on and so forth. And maybe it's bringing back dinner with the family. No? (laughs) No. Did you not enjoy dinner? I think people do that anyway. That's absolute codswallop. They don't. People don't do that. They just don't do that. You and your little middle class life is a bit different, but I mean... I'm not old... middle class. <laughs> you can tell it. from this accent I'm not middle class. No, but you're, you're, you're borderline with the way you behave. Oh my God. When we met, you liked Theresa May. Anyway, that's another <laughs> one for another day. Um, <laughs> so, a <laughs> few tips to get through. Like anyway. We're not going to do politics. No, let's not. Each other, facilitate me time. That's an important thing. We mentioned that. I think we should talk about looking after each other because we we wanted to keep this much more lighthearted, didn't we? Yeah. We're not going to talk about what we've been going through this last week, Um, personally, I don't think. We won't won't go crazy on us, no. no. But I think you can kind of gain from last week that, you know, we all have our ups and downs. And what we haven't been doing is looking after each other in any Mm. way. I don't blame us. It's not our fault. There has been, there's a lot of pressure. There's so much going on at the moment. The, the, the kind of priority has to be the children in terms of they're here all the time. We have to occupy them. We have to feed them 10,000 snacks a day. What is it with snacks? Actually, that's a good, in terms of tips, routine. Get a little bit of routine going in terms yeah. of your breakfast, your lunch and your dinner. Try and get them at a certain time. So I've breakfast done by nine. I've lunch done by half 12. I've tea done by half five. Get those kids in bed by seven. Get rid of them. <laughs> so my main point is that 
within all that, you have absolutely no, no time to look after each no, other. No. Even just a little hug, you know, just just going like, I've got you, it's mm. okay. You know, well, we and do do we that. We did that today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do de- did that. We did that. We've done it we once. We did that today for the first time in, yeah, about two weeks yeah but i expressed to you and again another thing is to talk to each other about what you're going through what you're feeling because i just went i've crashed i've massively yeah, crashed did. and i just oh, so, oh i feel just crashed as in i felt really down but you know what, all of a sudden you, for no reason you handled that so well but i had a baby nine weeks ago so 10 weeks now nine and a half it's 10 weeks in two days isn't it wow. but still i mean how good she look for 10 weeks I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed that you look the way you do. And well, I mean, thank you. You look that's like nice. that 14 minutes after the baby was born, to be honest. Not to boast, because that's arrogant, and I'm a bit big-headed about you, because I love you. But <laughs> the point being, we do need to look after each other, and we do need to... I mean, yeah, that's and you the need to tell each other. It is, yeah. yeah. It is. Sorry. And the thing is, I do love you. You know I love you. You know I care about you. You know I think you're the most beautiful thing ever, and I just i am overwhelmed by how much... I adore you and worship you, but sometimes we just hate each other. Yeah. And that's... And because that's... the little things just become an, so annoying mm. that you can't see the wood for the and, trees, and, and as then, they and say. Then you, and then, you know what makes it worse? Quite often wanting to go, okay, or like, all right. <laughs> You're that, referring to me today. Yes, I am referring to that. And it's just a trigger, isn't it? It's just a trigger, man. It's just a trigger. <laughs> Oh my god! Anyway, and it's not nice. It's not nice to do that. No, but it isn't. Sometimes you just really annoying. Just want that person to go away. So I did. That's the whole thing. So I went and sat in my car for yeah, a bit, spe- and then I came again. back in and I apologised. So did. yeah, you did space from each other. Yeah, a huge thing. That's the thing, actually. Do you know what? But it's part of looking after each other. Yeah, like go on. I was saying, I haven't finished. Sorry, my point I'm so yet. sorry. I'm terrible at that. My point is that you need to say when you're struggling, even when that person's annoying you or you're you're crashing, you know, emotionally for whatever reason. And I said to you today, oh, I'm just crashing. I didn't know why. I had absolutely no reason to. It was the pressure of kind of emotionally managing the children the entire morning. And then by the afternoon, I was just like, oh, my God, I can't I can't kind of talk anybody out of a mood, you know, one more time. And then. You were a bit moody with me and I was just like, oh my God, I can't do it. So I, I, I chose to say to you, I'm crashing. And then you were really kind. You were so kind and you gave me a little shoulder massage at the sink. I mean, I, I do do more than that normally. It wasn't <laughs> those just like... little things yeah. that make a big difference. Yeah, so I think actually that's an important thing, the tip. You know, you're meant to say now what I've done for you. Well, hold on, let me finish because I think it's a really important tip is actually you got to listen to each other. Like, if I had not listened to you saying that, you know, like, I don't think I'd have necessarily helped. And, you know, someone might say, oh, I'm crashing. And the other person might, oh, do you want a brew? But it's important to kind of open up about I that mean, and go and say to I mean, a cup of tea you, would help sometimes. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even offer you a brew, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about saying, oh, well, you know, why? Because we got to the bottom of it quite quickly. And I think when, you're, when, you, yeah. when you do crash, sometimes you become very subjective and you can't see the, the wood for the sunshine. So That's you, not the saying. Bothered. So basically what you've got to do is open up about it and and try and help your partner to kind of get to the bottom of it. And for you, I think we very quickly established that it was okay to feel like that. Yeah. And that helps, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just your partner saying, yeah, that's that's fine. It's been stressful. It's all right. Let's just whatever. The thing you do do for me is you facilitate my me time all the time. Like I nip out to the car for 20 minutes, three or four times a day. So like at the end of the day, like that is what you do for me. You don't kick off. You don't bother about that. You don't go, oh, here he goes. Are you going again? You never, ever, ever say anything like that. And that is because if I felt guilty about going out there every time, then I wouldn't be able to get that me time. Do you know what I mean? No, you have, you, it has to you be just, it would just be racked with guilt. Yeah, yeah, it has to be guilt free. And if I'd have gone out for that walk today and you'd have felt guilty about that, then you wouldn't have got your me time. Like you have, it has to be guilt free. And if your partner is making you feel guilty about that, you need to probably try and just ignore it so you can capitalise and, and, and enjoy it. If they the are, time. then they're a knob. Well, I mean, we, we, again, we don't know what people are going through in previous relationships that have created these barriers, but they need you need to talk about it and figure out why that that's yeah. a problem because you need to allow that. And, you know, I've spoken to a couple of friends this week who, and I said, oh, you know, I've got a bit of an anger problem at the moment getting therapy. And the mate was like, oh, well, how does it manifest? Deal with it like this. And then he messaged me about three days later and went, and he, the nicest guy, he's the nicest guy, never gets angry. And he's like, I feel it in my chest. 
I feel the rage in my chest. I don't know. I've never felt it like this before. So painful. I was just like, <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? It's, that's real rage. It's like the cabin fever is real. I'm like, yes. I think it is, it is. for everyone. And, and we're all, point, yeah. I, te- I actually text my sister to say that the biggest, not to take away anyone who's having kind of medical problems and that they're having symptoms or that are in hospital or anything are just that's horrific but for most of us I think the biggest battle that we're going to have to fight over the next three months is our mental health yeah it really is and my sister was like absolutely because it is sending you a bit crazy we're week we're week one well the scariest thing about it is I think that's going to be the next pandemic it's inevitable you know it's already happening one week into what is potentially going to be six months yeah I think people even just by the way don't be scared of that hopefully won't be six months but that's kind of worst case scenario let's just hope it's only about 12 carry on sorry people in their relationships I'm guessing have never spent this much time together you know either one of you's working or both of you working and getting that time getting that perspective from other people getting that kind of just social communication which is really really important and you know no one's getting that you're not even allowed to leave your house apart from once a day it's just you're gonna drive each other just the 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 tiny things Mm. we thought we'd got used to living each with each other but actually then spending 24 7 together brings it to a whole new Mm. level where just just minute things get irritating and annoying and it's just managing that all the time as well as managing the children all the time i think the biggest tip with that is just pick your battles and move on like if if you do have a battle move on like i mean obviously you know we can cross lines you gotta be careful not to be too angry um but equally like you've got the little trivial things move on let it go move on and that goes for not just during this sort of time but in general you know you gotta move on and i'm that's something that i'm missing with my best friend because she oh, I thought you were gonna say you're not very good at moving on no that's what i'm going on oh, to okay. say yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that my best friend gives me that perspective yeah so again, I'm not getting the perspective um, and I'm not very good at going, I just won't fight that battle today because I just, I fight every battle. You do pick most battles. Yeah. So whereas she's great in her relationship going, do you know what? That's really annoying, but I'm just not going to talk about it today. Whereas for me, I have to, at the end of the day, go, you really annoyed me at 11 o'clock by doing that. And I'm still annoyed about it. I just that was eleven o'clock four days ago. Yeah, I can't let these things go. (laughs) (laughs) And so when I meet up with my best friend weekly, like I used to, she'd go, "Just you know, just talk about big things. Just let's not talk about all the little Mm. things because they're going to happen all the time, especially right now." Yeah, and they cause massive arguments and it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. What you should be doing is looking after each other, doing nice things for each other, being kind and not well, very good at that. You, you, you were better when Becca was here. So Becca, please come back, FaceTime, <laughs> just do anything. Just go and make it to go upstairs and sit with you. Because we're hopefully getting the internet back in the next couple of days, which we've not had for six months, which is another bone of contention. We were going to move house. Claire got rid of the internet thinking, oh, it's not very good anyway. And then we've not had the internet for six months, which we did speak about in the last week's session. So we don't go, won't go through that again. Before we go on to our last topic about when is it wine o'clock during COVID-19. No, that was months. our first topic. We never spoke about that. We yeah, but there's nothing to say. It's like all the time is oh. one o'clock. So it's... Well, that's, I mean, we really haven't spoken about it and we haven't finished the tips. Every time I try and you just cut me off, you cut me off then. That's when you cut me off. There's no, there's no structure to this anymore. Every time I've got a bit of structure to it, like my autistic brain can't cope when you're like, okay, let's now move on to the other bit about this. I'm like, no, we're doing the tip. You actually let me speak this week, which is novel. I noticed when I was editing it that I wasn't very good (laughs) at that. So I really tried this week. No, but before we get on to when is it wine o'clock? Because I I think that's more of a, a quick topic, but... The final few tips we need to speak about, okay? We've spoken about speaking to your friends and your family and doing video chats and stuff like that, sending them funny videos, giving each other me time. But if you do have kids, I think it's really important to actually just let them have a bit of electronic device time. Don't yeah. don't berate yourself if you give your kids like five hours I've on stopped, the computer. Like, I've just... stopped berating myself. And I was quite strict previously about how many hours they've had and, you know, limiting that screen time and trying to do kind of other things with them a little bit more productive in my mind. But I just... I need the rest. I need the rest. I'm not ashamed to admit that anymore. 
I just need it. I need a break. I need us to not be in the same room together. They're happy. They need that as well. Yeah. And what I've realised is that they're really happy in in their bedroom, kind of just zoning out for a little bit. It resets them. And then when they come down here and we have a little bit of interaction or do some homeschooling, they are more in the mind frame of, okay, that's that time now. But that's their me time. Yeah. That's their me time. And you, you have to let them have that because that's the only time we get to like make It's the almost like off. us scrolling, isn't it? We yeah. need our scrolling time. Complete zombie time of just, I'm not thinking about anything else. I was else. just going to say, but that's the thing. The only thing they're thinking about at that time is playing Roblox or playing Fortnite or playing whatever. Or YouTube. Like, yeah, or watching YouTube, Jojo Siwa and all that kind of things. But yeah, so anyway, the few tips for you there. Hopefully we've given you a few. They're all over the gaff, thanks to... Tips that you would know about anyway, but just to say that it's all right. It's yeah. all right to just use these techniques to just have a little bit of time and to keep your sanity. Because yeah. that's what's more important. That's the only and thing happy, that's important. Uh, like you've said to me from the second that we started even dating, a happy you is a happy mum is a happy child. And never has that been more important than now. Yeah, I think the number one thing to think about over this next 10, 12, 14, 18 weeks or whatever is you've got to look after your sanity. You've got to look after your mind just read books if you can't think of anything right now just you know you've got to try it that is you got to be your goal for the next week is just to find something that allows you to have a bit of me time escape into your bedroom i've learned that <laughs> i always wonder where she disappears to so i've been escaping to my bedroom for you know even 30 minutes just to go i'm going to read this book there's this amazing amazing woman called anna whitehouse who I follow on instagram and she's kind of championed flex appeal which is flexible working for everyone and i just am in love with her and her and her husband wrote this book called where's our Hep- where's my happy ending i've been going up for half an hour and just reading a bit of that and it, again it gives me perspective it gives me me time it gives me all those things that i need and It just gives me some time to kind of reset my brain. And then I come down and I'm able to just go, right, let's paint something. And I've got FIFA. (sighs) And he's got (laughs) Secret of FIFA. Secret of FIFA. Secret of FIFA. Which you're so, you're so ashamed to admit that you've been playing FIFA. And it's okay. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Basically, I'm like, oh, you got your tired of going to it. Oh, I'll stay up and I'll do the last feed. I'll just watch a bit of telly for a little bit. Now I know where all those... Oh, do the last feeds have come from because they th- they come from the need to play FIFA. Oh, just for an hour or so. Do you know what I mean? I just have a couple of games <laughs> and I just that's my zone out. That's my me time that the kids have. I need that one too. I need all the me times. I'm sorry, I don't. I just. But when else do I get you chance don't to need play? Need to be sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Get, it's fine. I don't care. I'm sleeping. I'm well happy. All right then. Well, in that time, in that case, and now I'll go. Can I play FIFA and you go to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Send me to bed on my own in that double bed with the double duvet. It's like, oh, it's heaven. Yeah, I mean, our Artie sits and watches me play FIFA, so it's Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's but... a winner. Well, on that one, that note of everyone, being, note. everyone being a winner, should we, we should wrap it up here. So, yeah. again, thanks to everyone for uh, enjoying the first episode. Uh, and if you've come through straight to watch and listen to this one, then great. I haven't managed to get it up on iTunes yet, but I'm still trying. I've got something to do with the imagery, the picture, the Some sort of technology thumbnail issue. thing. But the podcast is available on Podbean if you do have that. And uh, also on YouTube if you're watching us here. Hello. I'm so weird. Thanks for watching. Uh, Until next week or the week after or whenever the next one is, we've been Parental Mentals. Got it right, just. Uh, I've been Marcus J. Richardson. I'm Claire Tilliard, Mum of UK. And uh, until next week, West Side.